Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about house plant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learned over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And today I've got quite a lot of plant chores to get through, so I thought I would bring you with me and we can do them together. I've also got quite a few plant updates to give you, some of them really exciting. I've got some amazing things going on at the moment that I'm super excited about. And then I've got some things that are not quite so good that I need to deal with in today's video. So yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So in regards to a lot of the plant drama that I've got going on in my collection at the moment, a lot of it is actually contained in my cabinet behind me. I will take you in there in a minute and kind of walk you through everything, but I've taken one specific one out for the time being to show you because this is one that's kind of been a little bit baffling to me even before I went away. I've just got back and so I'm kind of like dealing with lots of things. Um, but this is my philodendron marshanum and this is one of the ones that was an Aroid Asia import that Emma was sent and I looked after it for her when she was away and it, it did really well when I was acclimating it and it was giving me lots of new growth and just recently it just seems to have stopped like this leaf here has been unfurling for I want to say like a month two months it's ridiculous it was really fast before and i just feel like there might be something going on in the soil i feel like there might be root issues so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna go oh, throw soil everywhere i'm gonna take that one out of its pot i'm gonna have a proper look over it i'm gonna do some rehabbing because i i absolutely love this plant i was so excited to own this and I'm just not quite sure what's going on. So hopefully we will get to the bottom of that in this video. But yeah, I'll take you into my cabinet and I'll show you some of the other things that are going on and we can figure those out. So I just opened up my cabinet to show you things. And one of the plants that I was actually going to give you an update on is in pond. And I just knocked its cup over with all of the pond. And now I am sitting in a pile of pond. But this is my Alocasia sinuata and this is one that is suddenly doing really, really well and I'm really excited about because when I first got this plant at, not the plant swap just gone, the one before that, it came with another big beautiful leaf that died off fairly quickly and this is the one that it was left with. And this one just wasn't looking that great, it wasn't looking that healthy and not only has that one obviously perked up a lot, it's just given me the most beautiful shiny big leaf and it has actually got another one on the way there and I've just currently got it in a little plastic cup with pond the pond is a little bit all over the place at the moment its roots are kind of sticking out again because I've just spilt a load but that seems to be working really well I think long term I probably won't be keeping it in a plastic cup because obviously like plastic can release certain chemicals and I don't want anything bad to happen to this plant but it does seem to be doing really well for the time being and I just think that leaf is stunning so yeah that's uh one that I'm not going to be doing anything to today because I'm happy with how it's doing but then but then there's some drama my ficus chivariana and I'm really sad to be showing you this is looking like that at the moment she is pretty much i want to say dead she's been going downhill for quite a while and i think it's partly just because her soil's been drying out so quickly in here i think i should have probably taken her out of the cabinet a little bit sooner um but yeah so she's she's looking awful currently i'm gonna chop uh chop her up have a look at the roots today and see if there's anything that can be done i don't know if there's going to be anything that can be done but i'm gonna give it a go it might be too far gone um but that's probably the worst thing in here at the moment i would say uh my philodendron yopii as well is starting to give me a new little leaf it's obviously not looking great um, but I'm thinking about maybe getting this one into semi-hydro, so I'm going to put this one to one side and potentially tackle some stuff with it today. I have just got lots of watering and stuff to do in my cabinet, because since I've got back I haven't really had that much time to do watering, so maybe if I've got time I'll get around to do some of that later. I'm also going to take out my <laughs> Anthurium Silver Blush, which is obviously not doing great. Uh, this one is firstly in terracotta and also has been in a very warm environment where I haven't been around to monitor it and water it properly and it's lost all its leaves and this is another one that I'm thinking about potentially semi-hydroing so again I'm going to put that one to one side 
And then on this level, the only other one that I really want to take a look at is my Philodendron Painted Lady, because this one up until recently has been doing amazingly. But I think just again, because it's been so warm in the cabinet, her moss poles dried out so quickly. She's lost a lot of leaves. And although she is giving me a lovely new leaf there, I'm almost thinking about chopping her up and starting again. So I will make that decision later, but I just know that something needs to be done. So I'm taking her out as well. And then in the top section of my cabinet, on the whole, I'm pretty happy with how most things are doing. There's a little bit of drama, but nothing kind of major. My Alocasia Regal Shield here, oh my goodness, it's sizing up so beautifully. Like every new leaf it gives me is just getting more beautiful and bigger and bigger. And this is another one that I've just got in a plastic cup in semi-hydro. And again, as I said about the Sinuata, probably not a long-term plan, but it does seem to be responding really well. So I'm very happy about that. But the main thing that I need to do something about on this shelf is my Anthurium regal. And this is a plant that I have just struggled so, so, so much with. If you've watched my videos for a while, then you'll have seen kind of like the full journey of this plant. I got it at the Rare Plant Festival last year and within a day of me having it, it lost its beautiful big leaf. This is the only leaf it's given me since. And as you can see, it's, it's kind of, I mean, not that it should be perfect, but you know what I mean? There's issues. And it did start giving me another new leaf recently as well, just before I went away the first time recently. And by the time I got back, that new leaf had dried up, shriveled up and died off. So, so yeah, I think I just need to evaluate, reevaluate the way that I'm growing this plant. And it's got a really fantastic root system, but part of me is also thinking maybe semi-hydro. So again, I'll, I'll think about it in more detail when I get to it. But yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep that one by and I'm gonna probably do something to it today um, and then apart from that I've just got a little variegated Hoya Bella this isn't the Louis Bois because I've got a couple of a couple of variegated Hoya Bella this is the one that I've shown you many times before this is one that my friend Lottie very kindly sent me and I think it's an Albo, Mar Albo Marginata or something I'll put the name on the screen uh, but it's beautiful and it's just been rooting in perlite and I just kept it in the little bag that it came in and I can see it's formed a really, really fantastic root system now. But as you can see, it's going a little bit green and kind of algae-ish. So I think I am ready to pot this one up. So yeah, I think those are the main cabinet updates slash things that I need to be getting on and doing today. I have got a few more updates and exciting slash awful things over there so I will take you over to my kitchen and I'll show you them in a moment but yeah these are the things that I'm gonna be focusing on primarily. So the first exciting update that I've got over here is one that I haven't spoken about for a while because there hasn't really been that much to say on this plant but finally ah, she's giving me the most beautiful leaf in the world. It is my Anthurium Rockwianum and as you can see she has got just this one new leaf because I did have to chop her back. It is absolutely huge and it's still very much hardening off so I think it's going to get even bigger. But this is another one that I picked up at the Rare Plant Festival last year and I was saying this to my friend Emma the other day but I think it is just sod's law. All of the plants I came away with from the Rare Plant Festival I have had quite a lot of issues with. Like I just told you about my Anthurium Regal, there's my Anthurium SP Lemon as well and this one has also been a real struggle plant for me. But yeah she's just given me this leaf and I feel like all hope is not lost. This is definitely the most healthy leaf she's given me in the time that I've had her. And yeah, I'm just super excited to see what she does for me next. And this is another plant that I have also recently taken out of my cabinet. And I've been quite reluctant to do that with a few of my plants because I know that my cabinet setup is kind of like ideal conditions for them, but she's actually seemed to respond better so far being out of the cabinet than she did when she was in there. So I'm just trialing that and kind of monitoring her and we'll see how it goes. But then the other one is one that I keep giving you updates on and I just have to give you another one because I think it's very exciting. But it is my alocasia, my variegated alocasia fry deck. And this one's just doing so well. She's really kind of blossoming into a gorgeous full plant now. And I have noticed since I've got back, some of the white on her leaves is starting to die off. But again, that is that is normal. It doesn't contain any chlorophyll, the white growth. So it is more prone to dying back. But the rest of her 
is just thriving. So yeah, this is the one that I again took out of my cabinet and transferred to Pon. And since I've had her in Pon, I mean like, look at those roots. She's doing so well. So yeah, I just feel consistently proud of this plant. And I think that's why I'm doing so many updates. I just feel really proud of her. And she gave me so many struggles for such a long time. And now that she's doing well, I just want to gloat and talk about her constantly. Um, but yeah, that's what she's currently looking like. And the little corn that she puts up at the back there is also giving me beautiful growth now as well. So I think I might divide her at some point, but for now I just like to get her as big and full as possible. And then the final update over here isn't a bad one, but it is just something that needs addressing very, very quickly. It is my Philodendron Splendid, which as you can see has just got ginormous since I did the chop and extend. And I'm so glad that she's taken to it so well. She has just given me this beautiful new leaf that again is still hardening off, it's still sizing up but her moss pole is currently bone dry. I did, I left this plant, I mean, for probably in total about 14 days and I did wrap the pole in cling film and it worked well, but since I've got back, I've taken the cling film off and it's been about three days now and she's just had no hydration whatsoever. And I can tell she's getting a little bit floppy. Also one of her leaves at the bottom here, as you can see, kind of flopped over and went up against my window and it has burnt. So. I'm gonna give her a little trim back. I'm gonna probably get her into the shower. I think that's probably the best and least messy way of doing things. Um, Cause yeah, as I say, currently her pole is so, so, so dry. So this is what I'm gonna start with and then we can go from there. Because her moss pole is so dry, the moss is going to be quite hydrophobic. So I'm probably going to have to do a little spray of it and then come back to it in kind of five minutes or so for it to be able to fully absorb. I have also brought my Monstera Dubia through here as well because that one is very, very dry too. So we can kill two birds with one stone and do them at the same time. Also, just a couple of updates from the propagation zone in my bedroom. Uh, I'll get into this box first. I chopped up my Begonia Albo picture a while ago and I am so happy with how it's doing in this prop box. If I get time today, I might even pot it back up because I just adore this Begonia and I'm not a massive Begonia person. And when I first put it in here, I was like, is it going to survive? I don't know. I'd never propped Begonia in this way in a prop box before, but it's doing absolutely beautifully. I do really need to go through and sort my prop boxes out actually because as you can see there are some things in here that have rotten and oh yeah need to be taken out there's there's some stuff going on in here but I just I opened this the other day and I was so happy so happy to see this but the main thing I wanted to give you an update on was my pond prop box that I started recently I think I did this I think I made this for a patreon video um, but yeah, I've never, I've never made a pond propagation box before, but this is how it's going. I literally just put wet sticks in here apart from this section of growth. And as you can see, everything's sprouting and I didn't label things and I can't remember exactly everything I put in there without watching that back, but I'm pretty sure that this is Philodendron Praiso Verde. And as you can see, it's coming out beautifully, beautifully variegated. And this was a section of the Praiso Verde that I chopped up and just put in here like a leaf cutting normally. But I'm really happy with the variegation on this. And I do think it's probably to do with the heat because obviously everything contained in this area does get warmer than just kind of out in normal room temperature. But it has been so hot in my bedroom as well. Like my cabinet up there, if you look at it now, it's already 29.8 degrees and I'm filming this in the morning. That gets to like 32, 33 degrees, which is just crazy. So I would assume the same from this area here. So... Yeah, I have heard before that heat does amazing things for the Pareto Verde, but I need to just make sure I can keep this up because look at that. Isn't it just beautiful? Mm -hmm. 
So I'm going to start off with the philodendron martianum just because this is the one that I've been looking at for ages and wanting to deal with and I'm just going to start off by just getting it out of its pot and having a look at the roots. I'm aware it is a little bit dry at the moment but yeah as I say I just cannot figure out what's going wrong with it because it was it seemed to be growing so quickly before and all of a sudden it just it's just stopped and yeah it just it feels out of character for this plant to spend such a long time unfurling one leaf so besides the fact that the roots are obviously very dry it does actually look fine they look very full and pale and healthy and there's no sign of rotting or anything like that because i did wonder if maybe i'd over watered the plant and had the roots started to rot but it looks fine i can just only assume that maybe Maybe it's just been too hot for it in the cabinet and that's kind of sent it into shock a little bit. Uh, as I say, I obviously haven't been as on top of watering as I could have been, but I think I think I probably am still going to get it into semi-hydro just because I've been having so much luck with plants in things like pond and just, I mean, lots of different types of semi-hydro. I've kind of steered away a little bit from lecker. Um, I tend to use that more as a mixer for soils nowadays, but things like Soil Ninja Semi-Hydro, as I say, Lechusa Pond, Perlite even. I know Perlite doesn't have any kind of added nutrition, but obviously you can fertilise it. But I have just ordered a big bag of, oh, I put it in the most awkward place in the world, um, Soil Ninja Semi-Hydro. Oh my goodness, this is the worst place I could have put it because it's so heavy. Um, and this is very similar to Pon. It's just a bit chunkier. I've opted for the chunkier mix. Um, and I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying it doesn't have added slow release fertilizer in it in the same way as Pon does. Uh, but as I say, I kind of prefer that in a way because I love the fertilizer that I use and I quite like being able to add my own in. Um, so yeah, for the time being, I think it's gonna be enough room. Yeah, I think I'm going to go in with another little plastic cup. As I've said before, I've got so many of these plastic cups. I literally just collect them like anywhere I go. I was on South Bank recently in London and loads of people just left loads of cups on the side. And I just decided to pack them into my bag, took them home, gave them a wash. And it's just a great way of recycling and they are very practical for plant things. So I'm just going to put a little layer there, pop this on top and then pop some more semi-hydro on. And the great thing about using clear containers for this is that if you don't have a self-watering pot, you can just put your little water reservoir in there and you can just monitor it really well because I, I, I try to kind of steer away from buying lots of pots. As you guys know, I revamp a lot of my pots and self-watering ones can just be really, really, really expensive. Even the self-watering inserts can be really expensive. So, um, so yeah, what I tend to do Okay, so I'll usually just fill it up like this. And then I'll just fill the water reservoir to about there-ish. It doesn't really matter so long as you've got most of the previous substrates such as soil or moss or anything like that off. It doesn't matter too much if you go a little bit overboard because it's not that likely to rot. Um, but yeah, then the plant can just absorb as much as it needs. And I just find it a little bit easier to maintain. So. I'll see how it goes with this plant. I'll give it, I'll give it a month or so and I'll see, I'll keep you updated and see how it goes. But I would hope this should kind of kick it back into action a little bit because as I say, everything else looks fine. I was genuinely expecting to get in there and find something wrong with the roots. Uh, cool. Well, that was a lot quicker than I'd anticipated. So I will move on to the next one. Maybe for once I will actually end up getting through more than I planned in this video. I usually set myself way too much to do and I never get through it. Um, right, okay, let's go on to the one that is not looking that hopeful at the moment, my Ficus Shaveriana. Again, very, 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 very dry. This is, this is completely my own fault. I have got so many plants that have dried out beyond the point of saving in the time that I've been away. I should have really put something in place in terms of having someone come in and look at my plants, but I wasn't anticipating it to be this hot. So yeah, I'm just, the soil's literally just crumbling off this one. And what I'm gonna do, in fact, what I'm gonna do before anything else, I'm just gonna actually chop the top section of stem here. 
It is green inside. I was just looking to see if it was completely dead and twiggy, but it is green. Um, so, I mean, in theory, if this plant was going to have a chance of bouncing back, just by taking that top section off there, which obviously is not bouncing back, should just help to encourage some growth further down the plant. I've never, I don't think I've ever grown a ficus in semi-hydro, but I could even try this in semi-hydro. I do just feel like though perhaps its roots are so dry that they might just rot. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get as much of the substrate off as possible. And then let's see how it's looking. Maybe there's hope for this plant, but I don't feel particularly hopeful about it looking at it at the moment. So I'm actually trimming back quite a lot of the roots because towards the end, I just did a little chop to look and see how they were doing and they are completely dead. This is kind of like, I mean, this is just classic if you let roots dry out too much. It's often why if you import plants, often they are more susceptible to root rot because when they completely dry out, if you then put them in water, they, they just turn to mush. So I don't know if this is gonna be savable and that makes me really sad because this was once a beautiful plant and a plant that I was really, really proud of. I'm actually kind of feeling moss, I don't know why. My gut's just saying moss as opposed to semi-hydro. Hmm. Yeah, so that's, that's how it's looking. I'll give moss a go. I'll give it a go. At the end of the day, I have nothing to lose, apart from the plant, but I think I'm probably gonna lose the plant anyway. So let's put it in moss and see how it gets on. Again, I might take it out of my cabinet just for the time being, or I might actually put it back into my propagation cabinet, my bedroom, just so that I can monitor it a little bit better. Because um, occasionally, uh, occasionally, recently a lot, things in my cabinet here have been drying out way, way too quickly, and I haven't been as on top of it as I usually am. And I think stuff in my bedroom, just because I see it all the time, I'm. It's kind of like when all my propagations are in one place, I'm more inclined to check on them because I know that like the likelihood of if one starts going downhill, the rest are also going to start going downhill. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't that look lovely? <laughs> yeah, cool. I'll keep you updated. Please do keep your fingers crossed because I would love it if I could get this plant back. But the ficus as a genus can just be quite temperamental once it starts going wrong. I've had similar experiences with different types of rubber plants before. I had a little abijan, uh, was it an abijan? I lie, no, it was a tinnicky, a little tinnicky a while ago that did the exact same thing and I couldn't get it back. But I've got to try, I've got to try. So yeah, I'll let you know what happens there. And then, okay, so my philodendron painted lady this one's been doing really well up until recently. As you can see, she's got really kind of stretched on the bottom because she's lost so many leaves. And I'm thinking what I'll probably do is take some leaf cuttings of her and then take the others as wet sticks and just pop them into a prop box. And hopefully at some point in the next few months, I'll be able to kind of start her again from scratch. Um, again, at this time of year, having moss poles, I mean, moss propagations and moss poles in a very hot cavernous environment just isn't the best thing uh, because they dry out so quickly. And although I do use the plastic cut method, like here, I've made a little hole so we can stay hydrated unless you've got somebody to fill that up regularly. Like I fill a lot of mine up almost daily. Uh, this has had two weeks of, of none of that. So yeah, so this is my top cutting. And I am gonna, I know I could get another wet stick or two out of that, but I am just gonna leave that like that, I think, particularly seeing as it has got a new leaf unfurling. And I know I've said it in lots of videos before, a lot of people would say don't chop and propagate if your plant has got a new leaf unfurling. But for me personally, I would always just say if you can keep the conditions stable and if you can provide it with all the right lighting, heating, humidity, everything that the plant needs, then I, I still do it and I've never, would had any issues doing it that way. So yeah, I also just did a naughty thing and helped the leaf unfurl a little bit, which technically you shouldn't do, but I don't care. So yeah, cool, I'm gonna 
put that to one side and take the other leaf cuttings and probably pop them in the same container, I would say. It has got a really fantastic aerial roots that's going up the back of the pole just there. I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to get that out. So we may have to do, oh well, a little bit of root pruning. In fact, I just looked into the soil and there's, as you can see, lots and lots of roots in there, but actually not many of those roots are coming from the main stem. Most of them are coming from aerial roots on this section of the stem that have rooted into the pole, which is really good. That's very encouraging and hopefully means that the success rate of propagation in this plant is going to be a lot higher than if it didn't have that root system. I was just thinking as well, it feels like I haven't done just one of these kind of chilled, repotty, chassis videos in a really long time. I always kind of, I don't know, my plant care, especially at the moment, I think because I have been away a lot, I, I've been getting back and I've been kind of thinking, oh my God, right, plant care, go, go, go. And I haven't been putting that much of it on camera. And then the things that I have been filming have kind of been more practical videos. And these are the ones that I really love making. I love just sitting down chatting with you guys, talking through planty things. I always feel like I get a better gauge of where my plants are at and what I should be doing with them when I when I kind of talk them through. Um, so yeah, this feels like a real, a real luxury to be able to do this today. <laughs> How are all your plants doing? Are they doing okay? If you're in the UK, have you been struggling with the heat? Because I know I definitely have. I've been having so many heat dramas and I've lost quite a lot of plants. Oh, I mean, I've not lost a lot, but I made a plant struggles video recently and as you can see there were some deaths. I think it's just been kind of trying to, trying to use the heat to your advantage to spark lots of kind of lovely growth at this time of year, but also making sure it doesn't go too far the other way and take your plants down, which can be a very, very fine balance to strike. And unless you are about kind of 24 seven to monitor conditions, it's not always possible. And you're left with lots of, lots of drama like I am dealing with now. I actually think I'm gonna need to find my wire cutters because if you look just there, this bit's got an amazing root system, but it's rooted right the way through the wire and I'm not gonna be able to get it out. Um, so yes, wire cutters. Perfect. Okay, I have no doubt in my mind that this section will grow beautifully because look at those roots. There's more roots than plants at the moment. So yeah, I think that will do really, really well. And the roots look really healthy as well. Um, I'm not sure what I, I mean, I could just continue with soil with this plant. Again, there's this big part of me that wants to go semi-hydro because I'm just obsessed with semi-hydro at the moment. But let's get the other section out and then I'll see what I reckon. Oh, how roofed is this bit? to ease it out very gently. I've got a nice, a nice root there and some other lovely aerial roots. And again, I could chop this into more wet sticks. I've had a plans to do that, but part of me is thinking I won't just because I've obviously got more growth points, potential growth points, if I just let these all root together. So I think that's what my brain is telling me. And I think I'm gonna opt for moss again for these ones. Um, again, I'm just gonna use a little plastic cup or container. I've got a lot scattered around me that I can use. What am I doing? That's semi-hydro. I don't want semi-hydro, I want moss. There we go. Cool. So that's what it's looking like for now. And then this section, what do I do with this section? I think I'm going to put it back into soil, you know. Um, I'm not going to do too much root pruning because I think this root system looks immaculate and I don't want to mess with it too much. Um, but what I might do is I might use a transparent pot 
just so that I can monitor it a little bit better because actually I feel like that should put I think this actually could be a really good thing for the plant long term because I think it could help it to really put out some fantastic growth so yeah that's what my gut is saying and that's what I'm gonna do I've got a little bit of monstera philodendron mix left so hopefully that will be just enough and we can get the plant going again. Fabulous, that was literally the perfect amount of soil. So yeah, again, another very pretty one, but I think it will bounce back very quickly. And I think I'll probably keep this one in my cabinet because I think on the whole it has been doing fairly well. I think when it comes time to put it on a moss pole, then I might consider taking it out. But then again, we might be over the super hot weather by that point. So I'll play it by ear. For now, I'm going to keep it as a cabinet plant, I think. And then just this little one. This is just a, probably going to be a very quick repot. But this is my Hoya Bella Elbow Marginata, I think. The one that I showed you at the beginning of this video. Uh, and again, I'm kind of tempted to do semi-hydro for this one. I know I've got some Hoya that I've put into semi-hydro recently that have done really, really well. And especially since this one has been rooting in perlite, I don't really have to worry about getting all of the perlite off the roots. Oh, look at its little root system. It's so diddy. But this one has seemed really, really happy in the cabinet so far. It's been giving me lovely growth. And yeah, it's, I mean, the Hoya Bella is, on the whole, I find really, my door's open and it's making everything slam. Um, but I find it a really fast Hoya to grow. It's definitely one of my fastest growing. So I'm hoping that if I can find a substrate that it's going to be happy and then it will just continue to give me lovely growth. And hopefully at some point I can chop and propagate it and get it going as a big full plant because it's so gorgeous and it's one that I've never owned before. And the Louis Bois, the Louis, Louis Bois, uh, I can never say it right. The other various Hoya Bella that I showed you at the beginning of this video that I've also got. That one that has been quicker to grow, I would say, than my non-variegated Hoya Bella. It's been so fast. So, yeah, fingers crossed. This one is the same because it's just so beautiful. So beautiful. And the Anthurium Silver Blush, I know I don't have any leaves to show you at the moment. It has got a couple of little sprouts here and there, but there's nothing like leafy to show you. But this is the one that I got a little bit confused about because I'm, I'm not certain that it is a true silver blush. I'm not entirely sure, but oh wow. Oh wow, it's got brilliant roots. That's such a relief. It's got really, really lovely roots. But yeah, I've been a little bit baffled with this one. There you go, see the roots. Uh, because because I have got another silver blush in my collection and they look totally different. I think one might be more Doriaki. I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but it hasn't really got going enough for me to be able to judge it because I've had it in lots of different substrates and lots of different conditions and lots of different kind of pot types and stuff like that in the time that I've had it. And it's never seemed quite happy despite having really good roots. So again, I'm gonna opt for semi-hydro for this one today. I put my crystallinum into pond recently and it's done super well. So I think why not? I think that will probably, hopefully do very good things for this one. And yeah, then at some point, hopefully I can get an accurate ID on it as well because I've asked in videos before and I've had so like such a range of different comments and I just, I can't decide. So yeah, hopefully at some point it will become clear. Um, but the good thing, because the soil is very dry and the roots of this plant are very kind of dense and hefty, I don't really need to go and rinse them off before putting them into semi-hydro because the soil's just kind of fallen off them. But look how amazing those are. And again, I think I'm going to opt for a transparent pot for this one. I, I know this one does have drainage holes, but I'll just put it inside another pot that doesn't. And then I can create its water reservoir that way. As I say, I know you can get self-watering inserts for stuff for, like pots to make it a little bit easier. I don't find it that much easier, like I'm taking my plants out and checking on them anyway. But it is something you can do. It's just a little bit more pricey. Um, I did see something that someone posted on Instagram a while ago about how they've made their own self-watering insert, which I thought was so clever. I think they used 
some something like a I don't know a piece of perlite or lava rock or something floating on a little like a little bit of water that fills up or down. I'll have to look that up. If I can find that again, I'll feature it in a video because I thought it was such a clever idea. Cool. I've got lots of uh, plants that look like this that I'm creating today. Um, but I do have faith that that one's going to bounce back. As I say, those roots are just magnificent and I see no reason why it wouldn't respond well to that. So I'll give it a water shortly and I'll let you know how it does. Let's do the little yopi because again, this one, this got to the stage where it was doing really well for me and it was giving me beautiful leaves. The leaves got to about that big at one point and then everything just started going downhill. It had thrips very badly, so I chopped it all back. I did repot it and it did well for a while. Again, right now it's just dried out a lot, but I can tell it is starting to give me a new leaf and I want to be able to get it going well again. So you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking semi-hydro. Again, it's one that I feel like I've tried lots of options with, so why not give something new a go? And yeah, its roots are looking okay. It's got some that are better than others. In fact, it's got some really nice ones, but others are very spindly and dry. And like I said before, you've just got to be careful with this because if they are like too dry and they've died off, then it can cause the plant to start rotting. So I think some root pruning is going to be in order here. And I have said it before as well, but root pruning is also just really fantastic if you're trying to encourage new growth in a plant. Obviously not like completely chopping the roots back, but, but it's kind of like pruning from the top, how it helps to encourage bushier growth in the body of the plant. It's kind of the same principle, but from the bottom up. Because I know some people are very kind of precious about the roots and they don't want any anything to damage the roots. They don't want to have to hack them back at all. And I, I tend to be a little bit brutal with it and touch wood, I know I'm showing you some very sad cases today, but touch wood, most of, most of my plants are healthy and in good condition most of the time. So yeah, that's what, that's what they're looking like at the moment. And I'm just going to give them a little trim back, particularly the spindly ones, just to a point where I feel like they're very healthy and full. Because yeah, I've got a few that are looking a little bit shriveled. I'm just going to get rid of them. And seeing as the roots of this plant aren't massive, I think again, I'm probably just going to go in with a cup. It's also just such a good space saver using little cups. Like I group all of my plants in ponds together in cups on my top shelf of my cabinet. And I can just monitor them really well. And I can kind of, if I go in there with my watering can, I can see when everything needs a drink. I can kind of just group them together a little bit and it just makes my life a lot easier. So yeah, I think, I think, I hope this is gonna work well for this plant. Cool, another one done. And then this one, oh, my Antherium regal. This one I'm almost reluctant to touch again because I have put it into a new pot with new soil very recently and it did start doing something good. As I said earlier in the video, it started giving me a beautiful new leaf, but I went away, it dried out, the leaf died off and shriveled and now we're back to square one. But I can see that its roots have, I mean, like really seriously taken off since I did the transfer to soil because I think I'm right in saying it was just in moss before. So yeah, it's done really well in the substrate, but again, I th I'm, I'm thinking about semi-hydro <laughs> just because I've, I've had so much luck with anthuriums and semi-hydro recently. And I think the main cause of this one not being happy now is probably just that it's drying out too quickly. So I could just pot size up, but considering how quickly the roots have spread since I did the last repot, I feel like, yeah, I feel like semi-hydroponics is probably going to do better things. These roots, however, are so tangled. So tangled, and I want to make sure that I've got pretty much all of the soil off if I can manage it. So I feel like this might take a little bit of time. And actually these roots, although I think on camera you'd think they were looking good, they're feeling a little bit spongy. I'm not sure if that's dehydration. 
they smell fine, like they don't smell like they're rotting or anything and they don't feel sludgy. Maybe this plant is just severely hydrated, uh, dehydrated, sorry. But yeah, I've never seen this in Anthurium roots before. They're really kind of deflated, so maybe I should do some pruning here as well. Okay, so I've untangled most of the roots and I'm I'm kind of wondering is if the, the deflatedness is almost in my mind because they look really good. Like they look really lovely, but there's just there's just something that's not quite right and I can't put my finger on what it is. I'm going to give them a rinse off anyway before I even think about semi hydro. So I'm going to take them over to the sink and in fact I'll bring you over with me because I feel like I might be able to get a better angle on them there for you to see exactly what I mean. <laughs> okay yeah this light's a little bit better you know like they're just a little bit floppy and I don't think that's all down to dehydration like I think some of it could be but I think I am going to give them just a little chop back like if you look at that root there it just looks really really shriveled. I'm not going to do a big chop but I just feel like a little chop is a good idea and as I've already said root pruning can also help to encourage new growth so hopefully it'll be a win-win for this plant and hopefully it'll start doing something else for me soon. I'd be so happy if it did. Okay I've literally taken off minimal roots but I'm just going to give these a little rinse and then we can pot it up. Right, so the majority of soil is off the roots now, so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pot it again in a, uh, what am I saying, transparent pot. Um, so again, I can monitor the roots and if anything does start going downhill, then I can make changes quite quickly. I will just be keeping a very, very, very close eye on this plant in the coming weeks. And hopefully I'm worrying about nothing. It could just be down to the fact that the plant's dehydrated. I don't know. But yeah, will this be big enough, I wonder? I think this should be okay. Anthurium do quite like being root bound. Um, and they're often, similarly to spider plants actually, often more prone to giving you new growth when they are slightly root bound. So for the time being, for the time being, I'm just going to throw it all over the floor. Fabulous. And then I'm just going to give everything a little water through. So this one, obviously, I just want to create a little water reservoir for it. And I'm just going to use some distilled water that I've got. You don't have to use distilled water, but I just found this lying around. And seeing as I've got it, I may as well use it, especially seeing as a lot of these plants are struggling a little bit. And yeah, the ones that I put into cups, I tend to just fill them. Oh, in fact, that's a tiny bit higher than I usually fill, but around about there, and that will be fine. And with the sphagnum moss ones, the way that I like to keep my sphagnum moss hydrated, especially if it is going into a cabinet setting, is I will just put like the tiniest bit of water at the bottom like that just so that when it evaporates it can just help to keep the moss lovely and hydrated and then I can just feel the top to make sure that it is hydrated obviously you don't want to fill it really really full with sphagnum moss because it can just like bombard your plants with water and make them more prone to rotting this is the one that I'm not sure if it's going to do anything but we'll we'll find out in the coming weeks hopefully it will I'd be very happy if it did Perfect, so those ones are all ready to go. And lastly, while I'm just here, I'll just give you a little update on some of the plants that me and Ross got at the plant spot because I've just started propping these ones in water. And these are the Begonia Maori Haze that we showed you in the video. And as you can see, they've perked up so much and they're actually really beautiful. As you guys know, I'm not massive on colorful plants and there's a lot of colorful plants in here. 
but I actually really like the look of them and I kind of want to keep them for myself. These are Ross's but I could happily keep these back for myself. And yeah, no roots yet on the Tradescantia but I do think the Begonia, yeah the Begonia's got little roots already, that's amazing considering it's only been in water for literally a few days. So yeah, they're all doing well. And yeah, I'll be sure to keep you updated with these ones and all the other ones we've got at the swap as well. <sighs> but yeah, I feel like I've got through quite a lot in today's video and I'm happy with what I've got done and I'm praying that everything works and the plants continue on the path that I hope for them, but I will let you know. And if you were doing planty stuff along with this video as well, I really hope you got lots done. If there's anything as well that you feel like it would be useful if it was covered in a video, or if you want me to try something that you're not sure about and talk about it, then again, as always, let me know in the comments. But yeah, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day, and I will see you in the next video. Sexy part lovers.